morning, good afternoon, good evening, Dr. Barry Lund of News. A quick introduction to a, an episode of Sky News. It's called The Outsiders on here on a Sunday morning. They talked about The Vice. And the information on that, you really need to see it because all of the corruption seems to start up in Western Australia for some reason. I'll just read you the act. WA Separation Act of 2000. And three and 2004 removed the monarch, Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors, removed the crown of the United Kingdom, remo removed and substituted the oath of allegiance. Treason and fraud? That's up to you to make up your mind. The last ref we had, let's look at this. We had 46 referendums in Australia. 40 of them failed. Yes, 40 of them failed, which means six must have passed. I may be wrong with one or two. Okay, but that's roughly right off the top of my head. The next referendum we have, it'll be just like the ones we had for the elections. Remember, we have postal voting. The true reason, meaning of a postal vote is one time when things were done, shall we say, honestly. Whoops, that's a naughty word. I do apologize for it. People voted and in person. Our men and women turned up and voted. Postal voting was you had to have a lawful excuse, you're away on holidays or something. But now you got phone in, voting, the thing. So a referendum, it's a done deal. And I dare say, guys, wherever I say here, it's just a waste of time. It's not going to do anything. Anyway, further ado, have a look at this referendum. It just means that the voice on Sky News, you're going to be, the rates will go up because they'll be collecting taxes for each state. Everything starts in WA and dribbles down and then you'll be paying more rates because it goes to the aboriginal organization which they talk about on sky news i know very little about it, but i'm trying to share where it do anyway thanks for watching guys take care and be wary of the vice of voting because it's uh, all done by criminal politicians yet to be convicted bye for now the voice the most disturbing but not surprising story i heard was one told to me by one of the locals I wasn't at the event and I have looked but can't find any reporting of the event, although I'm told the ABC was present, so I can't vouch 100% for the accuracy of the words, but I am reliably informed that at this meeting back in February, Pat Dodson, the respected Aboriginal elder and Labor West Australian senator, did all the usual stuff about how important recognition was and the voice being in the constitution and so on but was then asked by certain indigen indigenous members of the crowd, well, that's all very well, but what is in it for me specifically? Which is a perfectly reasonable thing for any individual to ask. Now, according to my source, Pat Dodson described the voice as a hook. He was quite specific. Mm. Mm. He said the voice is the hook that we get everything else, sovereignty, truth-telling, a treaty, and so on with. And then he explained, once we have all of that, we get reparations. And that, he said, is when the money really starts to flow to every one of you. Now, as I say, I was not at the event, so I repeat, I cannot vouch for the accuracy of every word, but I do trust the, implicitly the person who told me the story. I've also asked Pat Dodson to confirm whether he said those words or not. What's more, the idea of the voice as a hook is writ large and clear in the Uluru Statement itself, mm. which spells out that the voice is merely the first step in achieving all those other goals. Interestingly, I also learnt in Broome that many traditional West Australian Labour supporters loathe the voice, but they might support it only because they're concerned that Albanese will be damaged if the no vote wins. So I say to the Libs, be careful, do not allow Albanese to paint the Yes campaign as support for him as pro on, along pro-Labour political lines. People should obviously vote yes or no to the voice based on the merits of the proposition and the argument, not on partisan political lines. 
Indeed, this weekend we learned that more Indigenous Australians do not support The Voice. And, as we were discussing earlier, Rita, James and I, even some of those whose names appear as signatories on the Uluru Statement from the Heart are furious that they have been co-opted into the Yes camp when they are vehemently opposed to the whole politicisation of Uluru and want the statement torn up or burnt. Differing viewpoints within the Aboriginal community is, of course, to be expected and indeed to be encouraged. That's what democracy is all about, remember? And indeed, the more Indigenous Australians disagree with each other, the more absurd is the entire proposition that you can have one voice to speak on behalf of them all. Yet when those advocating for the voice run into any kind of disagreement, all they do is sneer at their opponents. Like when Noel Pearson sneered at Mick Gooder, calling him a bedwetter. Mick Gooder's wrong. He's never been involved in the process that led to the Uluru Statement from the Heart. He had no involvement. He was running the Dondale Inquiry in the Northern Territory that, so far as I can gather today, has produced nothing. This is what little Mickey Good has done here. He's wetting the bed far too early in the day. So this is what the proponents of The Voice will do to those who disagree with them, Indigenous or not. They'll just tear them down and smear them. Nice. While in WA, a friend also sent me this email, written by the Kimberley Pilbara Cattlemen's Association, who are urging a delay in the implementation of what I mentioned on this show last week, the West Australian Aboriginal Cultural Act, which is due to come into force in less than a fortnight's time on July the 1st. Unsurprisingly, they, the Cattlewoman's Association, and many, many other West Australians are extremely unhappy about this act. And I quote, On July 1, the new Aboriginal Cultural Heritage Act comes into force, bringing with it a raft of obligations for landholders, businesses, workers, and individual individuals. For those with land holdings, 1,100 square metres or larger, which is equivalent to the old quarter acre block. You have to determine if Aboriginal cultural heritage applies to your land before undertaking any ground disturbing activity. The newsletter goes on. Section 12 of the new act describes Aboriginal cultural heritage as, quote, the tangible and intangible elements that are important to the Aboriginal people of the state and are recognised through social, spiritual, historical, scientific or aesthetic values as part of Aboriginal tradition. This can include an area, an object or a group of areas which are called the cultural landscape. Quote, the new laws look like a red tape nightmare, say the Kimberley Pilbara Cattlemen's Association. But here's the most worrying part. Many of those affected don't know what their obligations are. And there are some very stiff penalties, including prison time, for getting it wrong and causing harm to Aboriginal cultural heritage even by accident. We learned in March that a West Australian man is facing nine months jail and a $20,000 fine for building a creek crossing on his Tudia property in an alleged breach of the state's Aboriginal Heritage Act. Wow, they're not mucking about, are they? But it gets worse, and this is where every single homeowner, not in WA, but across the whole of Australia, needs to sit up and take notes. Quote, It would be easy to think of this as a rural or remote issue. That is not the case. There are significant areas of the Perth metropolitan region with registered Aboriginal cultural heritage, thousands of them. The legislation is extremely broad, says the newsletter. Removal of just a tiny amount of soil from the site. There are requirements 
surrounding amounts as little as 20 kilograms, the size of a bag of cement, or even 10 kilograms, or even five kilograms. That's just five of these, a one kilogram pack, five of these, that amount of soil, soil you remove from your own property may well trigger the need for a permit depending upon the location and which activity tier you are in. So let's just be clear here. If you live on any ordinary suburban WA home over 1100 square meters and you want to dig a new flower bed or plant a few trees, a couple of azaleas out the back, or put in a pool or a deck or a kid's swing or a sand pit, and it involves digging up and removing potentially as little as five kilograms, that's one kilogram, five of these, depending on what tier you are in, you may have to apply for a permit. And that means some massive, time-consuming, costly, indigenous intervention onto your own property and some group of Aboriginal cultural heritage bureaucrats telling you what you can or cannot do. Aesthetic values. Five kilograms of soil. Five of those. And if you don't, you face severe financial penalties or possibly even jail time. This is the end of individual freedom in Australia. Welcome to country indeed. The joke is, all of those yes supporters accuse me of scaremongering about the voice. What a joke, who needs to? Even I couldn't have come up with anything half as nightmarish as this Aboriginal Cultural Heritage Act in WA. The email from the Kimberley and Pilbara Cattlemen's Association asks some very pertinent questions, such as why hasn't the government the Labour government provided a transition period. Mm, no, they normally like transitions, but not in this case, obviously. Why hasn't the government put its permit system online months ago so that people might become familiar with the laws before they go live in less than two weeks' time? Why hasn't the government advertised in the paper, on TV and on social media to advise anybody about these changes? There is a petition which has been launched, so if you feel imperiled by this legislation, I suggest you hop onto it or contact the Liberal MLC, Neil Thompson. Meanwhile, the WA Labour Party, with their massive parliamentary majority and their new Premier, Roger Cook, well, they clearly do not give a toss. If you vote yes for The Voice, don't be surprised what else they hook onto it. What insanity and lefty lunacy awaits you? You'd have to have rocks in your head to vote yes. You'd have to have rocks in your head. But that's okay, because if you're in WA, you can dig up a few from your rockery. Oh, oops, no, not without an Aboriginal cultural heritage permit. You can't.